In this lesson, we want to review the vertical line test. So over the course of the last few lessons, we've been reviewing relations and functions, along with related topics such as domain and range. So at this point, we should fully understand the definition of both a relation and a function, and also how to find the domain and range of a relation. So now we're just going to go a step further and review the vertical line test. So again, I know most of you took Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 prior to joining this course. And essentially, you already know what the vertical line test is. But in case you've never seen this topic before, the vertical line test is just a visual way to determine if a relation is a function. Now, before we go too far into this, I want to make sure that you understand the concept of a vertical line itself. So with a vertical line, no matter what value you choose for y, x always just equals some number. So the way this equation is set up is it's x equals some real number. Let's just call it a. So a could be square root of 2. a could be negative a trillion. a could be positive 1 billion. It could be any real number you want it to be. Essentially, no matter what you choose for y, x just equals a. And a lot of people just say, oh, well, where's y? There's no y involved in this equation. We can use a little trick and say that this is x plus. I can put a 0 as the coefficient of y and then put y, and this equals a. So now I've written it as a linear equation in two variables, and I can put it on my coordinate plane. So this is a way that we can kind of graph this guy and see what it looks like visually. So again, no matter what I choose for y, I'm multiplying it by 0, so it goes away, and x just equals this real number a. So to see an example of this, suppose we're given x equals negative 4. The quickest way to graph this is just to go to negative 4 in the x-axis and draw a vertical line. This is what you're going to do throughout most of the time that you're graphing these guys. But when you first start out, you might see it in this format just to make it crystal clear what's going on. So again, you might expand it and say x plus 0, y equals negative 4. You might choose some values for y just to see what's going on. So you might say let y be negative 4, let y be 0, let y be positive 4. Well, okay, if I plug in a negative 4 for y, what's x? Well, 0 times negative 4 is 0, x is negative 4. Same thing goes if I plug in a 0 for y, 0 times 0 is 0, x is negative 4. And with 4 as well, 0 times 4 is 0, x is negative 4. So the idea here is that x is always negative 4 no matter what you choose for y. So this is going to be important for us to understand. When we look at a vertical line, it's always going to have the same x value. Okay, The x value will not change. And we'll talk about why that's important in just a minute. But let's just write these ordered pairs out. So this one's negative 4, comma, negative 4. This one's negative 4, comma, 0. And this one's negative 4, comma, 4. Okay, so let's go down to the coordinate plane. So here's our graph of x equals negative 4. And I've already pre-drawn this stuff just to make it a little quicker. We found some ordered pairs. We said we had negative 4, comma, negative 4, which would be right here, right? 4 units to the left, 4 units down. We had negative 4, comma, 0, which would be here, right? Just 4 units to the left. And we had negative 4, comma, 4. So 4 units left and 4 units up. So again, no matter what I choose for y, x is always just negative 4, okay? And the quick way to do this is just to go to negative 4 on the x-axis and sketch your vertical line. As another example of this, suppose you got something like x equals 7. Again, just find 7 on the x-axis, draw a vertical line. It's really just that simple. Now, the main takeaway from this is that I want you to understand that, again, with a vertical line, this one single x value is always the same. And you can see that it corresponds to an infinite number of y values, so we don't have a function here. But the basis of how this vertical line test is going to work is that if a vertical line intersects the graph of a relation at more than one point, then the relation is not a function. This is because the single x value, again, a vertical line has a single x value, it's going to correspond to more than one y value because you're impacting the graph in more than one location. Now, if this doesn't make sense right away, that's okay. When you see an example, it will. So let's look at y equals 2x minus 3. So this guy is a linear function. I'm just going to tell you in advance this is a function. And whenever you work with a linear equation in two variables, as long as it's not a vertical line like what we just saw, it's going to be a function. Okay. So for each x, there's one y. Now, when we look at this kind of graphically, I can see that no matter where I draw a vertical line, it's only going to impact the graph once. And so for each x, there's one y. And you can go through and just make some vertical lines. And that should be enough. And I'll just put some arrows at each end, just for the sake of completeness. 
But again, if you observe these, look, they only hit the graph once in each case. So here, 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 and here, right? So when you don't have a function, it's gonna hit the graph more than once. So this guy is a function. We'll just label this as a function. All right, let's look at one that's not a function. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 36. We already talked about circles in our course. We know this is the graph of a circle that has a center, 0, 0, and has a radius that is 6, okay? But essentially what we want to understand here is that visually we can determine this is not a function by graphing this guy, and then we can draw some vertical lines. We'll see that the vertical lines hit this circle in more than one location. And I'll just show you with three lines. Again, you can just do one. As long as one hits the graph in more than one location, you know you don't have a function, right? So this guy hits here and here. This guy hits here and here. This guy hits here and here. So let's think about an x value of 0 corresponding to a y value of 6 and negative 6. So for that one x value, you've got two associated y values. Again, 6 and negative 6. To think about why this happens, let's take this equation and solve it for y. So we have x squared plus y squared equals 36. How do we solve it for y? Well, if I want to solve for y, I want to subtract x squared away from each side of the equation. I'll have that y squared is equal to negative x squared plus 36. To get y by itself, I'm going to take the square root of each side. But remember, I've got to take plus or minus the square root of the right side. And this is kind of associated here, so I've got to move this down manually. So negative x squared plus 36. I'm going to go plus or minus the square root of this. And I'm going to take the square root of this. And so I'll have y is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative x squared plus 36. So where does my problem come in at? Well, it's from this plus or minus, right? It's from this plus or minus. Because let's say I plug in my 0 here for x. We already said it was associated with a y value of 6 and then also negative 6. So if I plug in a 0 there, I plug in a 0 there. 0 squared is 0. The negative of 0 is 0. So I just have 36. So I'd have the positive square root of 36, which is 6, and the negative square root of 36, which is negative 6. So you can see that this guy right here is what creates the problem, okay? For that one x value of 0, you get two associated y values, again, 6 and negative 6. So this guy is not a function. So we'll come back up here and say this is not a function. But again, you can clearly see that from the graph. If a vertical line impacts it in more than one place, not a function. All right, let's look at another example. So this guy is going to be a parabola. So y equals, we have the quantity x minus 3 squared plus 2. We're going to work a lot with parabolas in the next section of the course. This is going to be the graph of a quadratic equation. Okay, so let me put some arrows here and here. And what do we notice here? We notice that this is a function, right? If I go through and I draw vertical lines, no vertical line is going to impact this guy in more than one spot. Okay, so I'll just do four. You can see that this guy hits it here. Let me put my arrows at each end just to make this complete. Okay, so this guy hits it here, this guy hits it here, and this guy hits it here. Okay, so any vertical line you draw is only going to hit the graph in one location. So this guy is going to be a function. Okay. But well, there's something I want you to observe here, and this confuses a lot of students. Remember, we had these problems that we looked at where a single y value was sometimes associated with more than one x value, and we said that that was still a function, right? That was okay. So in other words, I could have a set of ordered pairs where I had 2 comma 5, and then let's say I had 3 comma 5. This is a function, right? Because 2 is associated with 5. So for this x value of 2, I know that y is 5, and 3 is associated with 5. So for this x value of 3, I know that the y value is 5. So this is okay. The same y value can be linked up to more than one x value. It's just that an x value can't be linked up to more than one y value, okay? So in this particular case, what you'll notice is that with the exception of a y value of 2, okay, this would be a y value of 2, you'd have an x value of 3 there, every other y value is linked up with more than one x value. And that's because of this squaring operation here, okay? That's what's creating that. If I plugged in something like, let's say 2 for x, 2 minus 3 is negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 2 is 3. So I would get a y value of 3 is if x was 2, 
right? But also if x was four, I would also get a y value of three. So if I plugged in a four there, four minus three is one, one squared is also one, one plus two is going to give me three as well. So that's okay. It's okay that an x value of two is associated with a y value of three, and also an x value of four is associated with a y value of three. That's fine, it doesn't violate the definition of a function. So I don't want you to get confused. It's a very common mistake. This guy is going to be a function. All right, let's look at another example where we don't have a function. So this is a sideways parabola. We will talk about these later on also. So in this case, you have the quantity y minus three squared is equal to x plus two. So clearly, if I draw vertical lines, they will impact this graph in more than one location. So I'll just draw those two to show you, and we'll talk a little bit more about this. We'll solve this equation for y and see what's going on. But essentially, you can see that an x value of seven is associated with a y value of zero and also a y value of positive six. And then an x value of two is associated with a y value of one and also of five. Okay, so this violates the definition of a function. So this guy is not a function. All right, so to see why this is the case, let's go down to the next page and I'll rewrite this equation. I wanna solve it for y and I wanna think about this for a minute with you. So y minus three quantity squared equals x plus two. How can we solve this for y? Well, what's going on with y? Y is inside of these parentheses here and three is being subtracted away from it and it's being squared, right? So the first thing I would do is I wanna undo the squaring operation. So let me take the square to this side. But again, I've gotta go plus or minus over here before I take the square to this side, which again was x plus two, okay? So this is gonna cancel with this. So now what I have is y minus three is equal to plus or minus the square root of x plus two. And then if I add three to both sides, I can get rid of this, and I can essentially say that I have y equals plus or minus the square root of x plus two plus three. Now, this is what's gonna give me the problem. Again, if I think about what I saw up here, an x value of seven gave me a y value of zero, and then also a y value of six. So if I plugged in a seven there, I can see y. Seven plus two is nine. The principal square root of nine is three. Three plus three is six. Then if I do seven plus two, again, I get nine. The negative square root of that is negative three. Negative three plus three is zero, okay? So that's how the x value of seven is corresponding to or linked up with or paired with two different y values, right? In this case, it's zero and then also six. So again, this guy is not a function. For the last one, it's a little bit tricky. We have y minus one, this quantity cubed equals x. So far, every time we've seen y wrapped in some parentheses, we haven't had a function, right? So this is one that kind of throws students off. So let me just put some arrows in here real quick and let's think about this for a second. If I went through and drew vertical lines, you can see that none of them would intersect the graph in more than one location with the exception of you might think that it would hit more than once if you drew it right here, right? Where an X value is zero. It's because of the way the graph gets drawn. But if you really look at it, if you had a computer model and you know, you're online and you use one of those kind of graphing calculators, you can zoom way in. You can clearly see that this guy right here is doing this, okay? It's not ever stagnant, okay? So this guy, a vertical line, is not going to intersect that graph in more than one location. If I drew a vertical line at x equals zero, it would only impact the graph in one location. It's just the way it's drawn, okay? So I can go through and make some vertical lines, and I'll draw one at x equals zero. I'll just draw one more over here. And again, in each case, this is gonna impact the graph in one place only. Now, to show you this completely, let's solve this for y, and again, we can think about an x value of zero. So let's go down here. So we have y minus one cubed equals x. How am I gonna solve this for y? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the cube root of each side, so this is gonna what? This will cancel with this. And what I'm gonna have is just y minus one, and this will be equal to the cube root of x, and I can add one to both sides of the equation. So what I'm gonna end up with is just y is equal to, I'll have the cube root of x and then plus one. Okay, so let's think about an x value of zero now. If I plugged in a zero there, am I gonna get two different outputs for y? The answer to that is no. 
the cube root of zero is just zero. Y would just be one and one only. So for the given input of zero, the Y value is only gonna be one. And that's the one that we really call in a question. If I kind of erase all this and we go back, a lot of times when you look at this graph, again, if you look at an X value of zero, that's where it looks like a vertical line would kind of hit the graph in more than one location. But once you solve it for Y and you plug in for X, you can see that that's not the case, right? An X value of zero just gives you a Y value of positive one and positive one only. So this guy is going to be a function. And I erased my arrow. So let me draw that back in. So once again, this is a function.